here's something a bit different. The height Y40. Typically for a mid tower build, I'd just stick with an NZX CH5, but for this build, I wanted to try something that felt new and fresh. And on the surface, the Y40 is exactly that. I mean, for starters, you've got this completely uninterrupted glass on the front and the side, height shamelessly calling it a fish tank vibe, which I think is pretty accurate. There's also a different approach to ventilation, which is pretty cool, you know, nice and refreshing compared to the usual hole punching, which we've seen over and over again, but still looking relatively clean and appealing. This is also one of the smallest mid towers to accommodate a top mounted 360 mil radiator, which is pretty cool. And you've also got room for a 280 on the side. Haven't made my mind up of which one we're gonna use yet. GPUs can only be mounted vertically here though, which is interesting. The horizontal expansion slots are just too small and kind of reserved for those add-in cards on your motherboard. There is some actual ventilation for that vertical mount as well, which you know typically is blocked off in some other cases. And there's even a fan hidden underneath too. So yeah, for a case that's only a bit bigger than an NZXT H5, definitely not bad when it comes to how that extra volume has been used. I mean, in some areas, the Y40 can feel a bit plasticky at times, a power supply shroud, for example, but other than that, really looking forward to getting some hardware inside this thing. Speaking of which, every build starts with the CPU, and here we're going with the AMD Ryzen 7950X 3D. So theme for this build, fastest AMD gaming PC, and the 7950X 3D is the current flagship. It is also technically the fastest CPU just outright at the moment, although honestly, the gains are pretty slim over something like a 5800X 3D or 13600K in most games. I've done two separate videos on this CPU at this point looking at performance, so be sure to check those out if you're interested, but for a completely overkill build, it does fit in quite well. As for the board, we're going with the X670E Crosshair Hero from Asus. Absolute beast of a motherboard, and actually what I've completed all of my Ryzen 7000 testing with, real pleasure to work with. Basically all the features that you'd expect from a flagship board, huge heat sinks covering a monster VRM, a ridiculous rear IO, and also some pretty convenient start and reset buttons. For the memory, I'll be going with the fastest option that I currently have my hands on, which is this blistering 7200 megahertz kit from G-Skill. I have actually tested this kit on this board with this CPU, and I can get 6000 megahertz CL30 with some pretty tight timings. For some games here and there, that does result in a nice boost over your standard memory kit. But here's where things get really exciting. This is a part which I've been pretty keen to test out for a while now. It's the DDC CPU pump block from EK. And I mean, what a piece of gear. I love how simple this makes water cooling. There's no need to worry about an additional pump and reservoir and the extra fittings and tubing runs. All of that is packed into this little package right here. And it is small when factoring in everything it does, but I have to say this thing is a unit, actually a lot heavier and bulkier than I was expecting. At the same time, it is the most overkill and premium version of a CPU pump block lock out there, and it also has the most port options as well. Installation was also surprisingly easy. Uh, not sure about the AM4 or Intel side of things, but the AM5 model that I have here is brutally simple. The mounting pins are pre-installed, just line them up with the factory AM5 socket, and then tighten it up from the back with the included tool. That's really it. And the result looks like a perfect match. I mean, I'd actually prefer this cooling setup over a monoblock. I think this kind of looks better. The nickel plated finish on the pump block and the kind of reflections that you get off of the motherboard just seem to work so well. It's also a very heavy motherboard setup. So uh, let's stop messing around and get this thing finally installed. Next up, we've got the power supply. Good idea to get that installed and all of the cables hooked up before we start installing more hardware. And pretty simple here, I've gone with the Be Quiet Dark Power Pro 1200. It's 80 plus titanium rated and should be basically near silent operation. It comes with sleeved cables as well, which is pretty nice. Uh, definitely not up to spec with say a cable mod kit, but hey, at least better than your stock wiring. All right, but let's talk about cooling. I will actually be sticking to air cooling for the GPU, but for the 7950X 3D, I had initially planned to go with this thick 360 RAD setup from EK. This was perfect since the Y40 can house a 360 up top and the tubing runs would have been super simple until I realized it didn't fit. 
EK CPU pump lock is just a bit too tall. We need at least 65 millimeters of clearance to get this in there, and we only have about 60. So really unfortunate, this would have looked absolutely sick, but luckily there is another option. And that's a side-mounted 280. And it just so happens that the excess PC rad that I've used for a different build fit perfectly, like top to bottom, no space wasted at all. Although this is technically plan B, it did work out pretty well. Now, something that I've been super excited to get to in this build is the tubing, because for the first time ever, we're going full metal. And I've always strayed away from metal tubing because of how intimidating and difficult it looks from the outside, but you can actually buy these pre-bent tubes, which makes things a lot easier. So this is nickel plated brass tubing from EK. The 90 degree bends are basically perfect as far as I can see. Don't mind the fingerprints, we'll wipe those off afterwards but yeah this should look super clean i'll be pairing these with their satin fittings which i'm a big fan of i think if you're using black tubing metal or clear satin will always just look good you can handle these things all day multiple builds uh, no gloves or anything and they'll still look brand new black on the other hand seems to kind of degrade and look very second hand after a single use so extenders here and 90 degree fittings on the cpu block uh, that way we can clear the ram dims properly and also fill up some of that empty space within the case and I also added a double 90 degree fitting on one of the radiator ports to make the tube routing there a bit easier. At this point, we're ready to cut some metal and there's no need to use any heavy equipment for this. Uh, in fact, EK's own hand tool seems to work perfectly fine. Basically, it's just like cutting normal tubing. You tighten up the blade, cut into the metal until there's little resistance and then just keep repeating. I was actually very surprised at how easy it was. After every cut, I was giving it a moderate sand to smooth out the edges, regular 240 grit sandpaper seems to do the job pretty well here. Uh, if you skip this, you're almost guaranteed to rip apart some O-rings within the fittings, which does mean a greater chance of a leak. So definitely don't skip this. But yeah, from here, it's just kind of fine tuning the length of the tubing. I like to make that first cut pretty conservatively. And then on the second or third cut, make that the one that you want to be perfect. So if you want to cut 80 mils, just cut like 60 mils first, and then really dial it in afterwards with a second cut. Otherwise, you risk cutting off too much to start with or not having enough tubing to work with to make a correction. And the result looks pretty damn good. Our tubing runs are nice and parallel. Luckily, I got it pretty dialed in on the first go. And yeah, metal tubing, we'll definitely be using this again. Now for the GPU, since this is the fastest AMD build, you could probably guess what I'm using. It's of course the 7900 XTX. The specific model that I have on hand here is the Asus Tough OC, which is just a mammoth of a card. I mean, it's over three and a half slots in thickness, 353 millimeters in length, and has three eight pin power connectors. Thankfully though, installation could not be easier. Although I would recommend just plugging in those cables before locking the card in, otherwise, they're a little bit hard to access. And I mean, you love to see it. The card takes up almost all of the room that it has available to it, making this mid tower actually look kind of space optimized and dense. The only thing left to do is fill up the loop and get this thing up and running. So yeah, pretty happy with the finished result. I mean, if you want that kind of full glass fish tank aquarium look as height like to call it without stepping up to something like a Y60 or an O11, I think the height Y40 is actually a pretty decent choice. Stand out for me though, would have to be that metal tubing, especially with the lighting reflecting off of it. Just looks super, super clean. Very, very happy with how that turned out and actually not a look that I've had from one of my PC builds before. I will mention though, pretty important, bleeding all of the air out of this custom loop and out of the reservoir of that pump lock did take quite a bit of time. We are working with a pretty small reservoir here and I also forgot to buy some quick disconnect fittings, which would have made filling the loop up a lot easier. But it's your usual method otherwise, you know, switching the loop on and off, changing the pump speed to move all of the bubbles around and also rotating and moving around the case. Ideally, you'd come back to this sort of loop a week or so later and top it up again once the rest of those bubbles have found their way to the top. And as with pretty much every PC build that I've done recently, I've used the fan control software to control the speed of all of the fans 
stands and the pump. Completely free software, can highly, highly recommend it. Very easy to use and set up. You don't need any kind of special fan hub or anything like that as well, which is nice. And the great thing is you can use the GPU as the temperature source and base the fan curves off of that. That's the biggest advantage here over just using your motherboard's BIOS and also that you can just change things on the fly without having to reboot. And that way you can really dial things in. So with this setup, we've got the two side intake fans. We've got two top exhaust fans and there's also a kind of bottom intake fan in the power supply chamber that comes default with the Y40, but I don't really recommend cranking that thing up. It just doesn't really seem to do much, to be honest. But yeah, running the other four fans at around 1000 RPM, maybe even a touch lower than that, seems to result in some pretty decent thermal performance. 7900 XTX here in Fermark really didn't go over 70 degrees with a room ambient of 23. Total board power here was at 375 watts and the memory junction temp was getting a little bit toasty, but nothing unreasonable. But yeah, that massive cooler on the 7900 XTX seems to be putting in some pretty decent work because it's a reasonably quiet setup. The 7950X 3D, on the other hand, I can't say the same thing about. As some of you know, uh, the heat management for Ryzen 7000 in general, and especially the 3D vCache chips like the one that we have on hand here, is just not that great. Uh, for example, with an Intel chip, 12th gen, 13th gen, on this cooling setup, you can probably squeeze 250 watts, maybe even 300 watts of kind of heat load out of the chip before it starts seeing any kind of thermal limit. But with the 7950X 3D, it hits its thermal limit of 90 degrees at not even 160 watts. So yeah, probably a really good idea that we didn't go with a top mounted 360 mil cooler setup or you know even something more powerful because these chips just don't seem to scale the more cooling you throw at them. Now, as far as gaming performance goes, I've done full reviews on both the 7950X 3D and 7900XTX, and those videos will give you a much better idea of what we're working with here, but a high frame rate experience at 1440p and 4K is really no problem. Overall, the 7900XTX is very similar in performance to an RTX 4080, but when factoring in things like ray tracing, AI upscaling, creative app support, and also power consumption, especially in esports titles, I would recommend probably spending that extra hundred dollars or so for a 4080 or better a 4090 if you really want the fastest system but yeah that's pretty much it you know something a little bit different something a little bit fresh uh metal tubing was pretty fun to work with ek pump lock we'll be using that in a future build as well and the y40 was a new experience too we'll definitely keep this one in mind for future mid tower builds otherwise hopefully you all enjoyed and i'll see you all in the next one